and I've got a bite. <laughs> we'll come back to this in a second. I've had another bite. Is this one on the adjustable still on? Yes. <laughs> So I've just arrived at Suffolk Water Park. I've actually never been here before, which is quite a surprise because it's quite a popular and famous venue. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much my first session of the spring, first proper chance at targeting some carp this spring. Um, and I'm proper excited. We're gonna be starting, I think, on M1. I'm gonna leave my options open though. I'm gonna sort of have a have a look about and see where my best options are i want to catch some fish today um so i'm going to try and stack the odds in my favor get on some fish no matter where they are no matter how big or small and have a bit of fun i've already noticed that basically you can drive around the whole complex i didn't actually realize you can pretty much park behind every swim i'm not going to do that because i feel like i'll be limiting myself to that swim if i just drive behind it dump a load of gear off and uh, and then i'll sort of sit there all day so i've got minimal gear my rods my unhooking mat and everything's on my in my rucksack on my back i've got a bucket a chair and i'm going to go for a wander so let's see what happens Okay, so I haven't really had to go very far and I've already found some fish. There are, there are quite a few and they're right up on top. And even though, um, you know, we've had some good fishing conditions recently, but now it's quite cold and, um, and we've got quite a bit of fog, but they're right up on, on the top. And yeah, it is high pressure. It's like 1,028, 1,029. So it doesn't surprise me that they're right up on top. And also it doesn't surprise me that they're over this side as well because there are probably five anglers sort of setting up on the other side being quite noisy and yeah they've clearly pushed over here so yeah this is going to be as good a starting point as any and it'll be a good chance to get the zigs out i think so let's go So there are quite a lot of fish up on the surface and yeah straight off I'm going to go in with zigs and I just need to gauge the depth first. I've never been here before like I said so I've, I've not got any sort of idea of how deep it is so I'm just going to chuck out a three ounce lead, feel it down carefully to the bottom and that will give me a rough guide. I could do it with a, with a marker float but I think doing it roughly will be fine if I don't catch sort of for the first hour or two and i feel like i need to be more accurate with the depth then maybe i'll get a marker float out but for now this is the quickest way of doing it Okay, so my initial thought was I'd just quickly get two zigs um, on leg clips. I already had leg clips set up on my rods out there, but I just think with how close the fish are to the surface, I probably do want to be more accurate than what I, I sort of first anticipated. So I'm going to hedge my bets. I've got one that I've already cast out on a, on a fixed zig with a leg clip. Um, and I'm going to chuck an adjustable out and it'd be quite a good, uh, good little gauger to see uh, which one works better, if either of them work at all. So yeah, I've just got the uh, adjustable zig kit there, three ounce lead um, and a little piece of foam that's just plugged in the hole holding my hook bait to make sure that I don't get any tangles. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get it out and see which one works best. OK, 
Okay, so I've tightened down to the uh, to the lead. So the float is currently on the bottom with the uh, with the lead up against it. So I'm going to slowly let it off about a foot at a time, roughly, and uh, that will give me the depth. And then once it's up on the surface, I'll be able to just bring it down so that that zig is just inches below the uh, below the surface where the fish are. So one just make that a little bit looser two three four five six so i was wrong about the depth when i chucked the lead out oh no six and a half pretty good guess when i chucked the lead out so that's on the surface now, just tighten down to it till it just pops under. That's now, and then I'm just going to take about two and a half foot off because I've got a two foot hook link on. I didn't want to put it much longer than that because I knew that it wasn't very deep. So yeah, two foot hook link on this. So that's about one foot. two foot and then I'll just take it down another few inches and that should be just below the surface. Right, we're on it now, we're in the zone, that's going to happen hopefully. Oh, I've already had a bite, that hasn't registered. <laughs> My alarm's not switched up. Well, rather classically, I didn't switch the alarm on <laughs> and I turned around and I'd had a big drop back bite on the fixed zig. But to be honest, from now popping up the adjustable, I think I'm fishing the fixed pretty much exactly the same sort of depth that I'd fish the adjustable. So, yeah, um, oh, it's coming. It's literally swimming right into this bank. So yeah, what a great start. What a great start. It doesn't feel massive, but that's not what it's about. I don't want it getting round here though. Now that is not a bad start at all. A lovely scaly little carp and yeah, well, well happy. Exactly what I wanted from today. Get a couple of bites. I know I've only had one and I'm not gonna count my chickens before they've hatched, but I think there's a good chance of a few more. This bite didn't take very long at all. And yeah, I think I, think I can be fairly confident of a few more bites. We'll get the zigs back out there and see if they keep on producing. What a start. So that didn't take, didn't take long, but it probably actually took longer than I expected because yeah, as the morning sort of gone on, there have just been more and more fish on, on the surface. And I can already see like everybody else around the lake is fishing on the bottom. They're throwing sticking boilies out, catapulting bait out, and they're fishing six foot below the fish and nobody's caught anything. I think maybe some one person caught a bream, I heard, I heard them say. Yeah, but springtime, 
high pressure. It's it's all about zigs. All about zigs. Later on we might get a chance on the bottom, but yeah, this is it for now. And now he's coming in. There we go, number two. Lovely job. Wicked. And there is number two. Yeah, really haven't been fishing for very long. Lovely bit of action. And uh, it's been yellow zigs all the way. Yellow aligner, yellow foam. I think with this coloured water, it just seemed to be the, uh, the right option to go in with. And yeah, the fish agree. Let's get him back. So another, another one on the fix zig. I don't know quite what's going on with the adjustable. I'm really surprised it hasn't gone. Might need to change the, uh, the depth a little bit on it. Um, but yeah, like this is just wicked action. Hard, well, can hardly get any filming <laughs> done of technical bits just because keep on getting bites, but can't really complain at that, can I? Is this one on the adjustable still on? Yes. <laughs> oh, that is wicked. He is lovely in there. Yeah, this is the first bite on the adjustable. Funnily enough, when I was playing that one, and he's just about to get out the net. <laughs> when I was playing, when I was playing that one, it's pulled the zig down where it's caught on the line and then slowly but surely the line sort of come back round as the zig has uh, has lifted up through the water and I wonder if that that like little bit of movement that bit of extra movement might have spurred something onto this this adjustable who knows it feels a better fish actually well having never been to Suffolk Water Park before. Obviously the main lake is the is the sort of one with the really big carp in, lots of 20s, lots of 30s. Um, I didn't really know what to expect with these other lakes and I am being very pleasantly surprised. And whilst they're not big fish, that's not what today's session was about at all. I just wanted to come out get a few bites not bring loads of gear just have enough stuff to go on me back and yeah it's just proper proper fun i think it's still only about four or five degrees the mist hasn't even lifted yet and uh yeah catching fish This does feel a bit bigger. So what do you reckon to that? Proper scaly little beauty. Yeah, the third one to the fixed zigs and the first of that double take, but the other one is considerably bigger than this on the adjustable zig. But yeah, wicked fun and exactly what I wanted from a day's fishing today. Look at that proper stunning carp. So there is the second of that double bubble double take and yeah the first on the adjustables definitely by far the biggest one of the session really solid fish actually probably 13 pounds something like that and actually got really nice colors on it for for a venue where the water is quite colored 
um, to have the sort of orange tones on this is it's probably quite unique but yeah lovely fish and brilliant morning fishing so far So zigs can be a bit of a daunting tactic. I think the idea of just having a single hook bait that's up off the bottom, away from any bait, almost seeming like it's in the middle of nowhere, can, I think, put a lot of people off. A lot of people don't have confidence in them, but they, they just work. They, they really, really do. And if you can get your location right and then get the depth right, then it makes it all, all the more easy. Now, for newcomers to, to zig fishing, I think the best way is to go with a, the, an adjustable zig, and that means that you can cast it out, leave it in place, and try lots of different depths until you find the one that's working on the day. So I'm just gonna run you through how to set it up. It's really, really simple. If you set up a marker float before, you can very, easily set up a adjustable zig so the first thing that slides on your line is the boom section so you slide that on and then that's followed by the float and you thread that on the thin end first and then the line pokes out the fat end there's then a ball bearing swivel that you get in the kit so just um, tie that on with your preferred knot i like a five turn grinner and then it all pulls together and that's pretty that's the the sort of essential kit set up then you add your lead which basically you take the pin out of the clip there you push the swivel of the lead into the clip then you push the pin through the eye of the swivel and that locks it all in place if you want to drop the lead you can use the pva ties but i tend uh, i tend not to unless it's very very weedy then you get your hook link section. I'll tend to use somewhere between two and three feet uh, for this section, probably three feet if it's deeper and two foot if it's shallower. So here where it's only six foot deep, I'm using a two foot hook link. And that is just loop to looped onto the uh, ball bearing swivel there. I've got 12 pound zig and floater hook link which is my preferred uh, sort of starting point as a breaking strain. I'll go up to 15 if it's weedy, down to nine if I'm really struggling for bites and there's not a lot of weed about. Hook bait on this occasion is the ever faithful zig aligner in all yellow. So yellow zig aligner, yellow foam, and I've got a size six zig and floater hook link on that. And I've got a bite. <laughs> we'll come back to this in a second. <laughs> so another one like it's just it's brilliant fishing where you just literally using no bait chuck it out and um yeah it's going it seems to be yeah every every sort of 15 20 minutes it's it's going There you go, he looks about 10, 11 pound, happy days. Thank you very much. So we're really getting through them now. And um, yeah, so I can get back talking about that adjustable to you. Yeah, I'm just gonna unhook him in the net, slip him back, finish up talking about the adjustable and then hopefully bag a few more. I think this is number five. It's not even lunchtime. Okay, so I think I had just told you about the yellow zig hook bait and the zig and floater hook in a size six. I always like to use a, a big hook on, on zigs. I think there's a misconception that you have to scale things right down and um, yeah, using a size six, I don't get any less bites and I land more fish. Um, that's what I feel anyway. And then just to make sure that there's no tangles, I did mention this earlier but it's worth uh, showing you exactly how to do it i've got a small sliver of uh, pva foam that i've cut off of a normal pva foam nugget i've rolled it in my fingers so that it's like a little tiny cigar wet wet the end of it so that it goes tacky and then poke it into the little recess that you find on the adjustable float 
So then you just hook the, uh, the hook through the end of it, just nick it, nick it through. That obviously uh, casts out and, and completely avoids any tangles. Then when it's in the water, it melts, comes free, and then obviously your zig is above your float and you're fishing. And yeah, like I say, it's a really, really effective way of finding the depth where the fish want to feed at without sort of having to wind in and chuck out again. As long as you're on the fish, you can just raise it up, bring it down all day long until you find them. But I have to say, it has been quiet actually. It's probably been an hour since I've had a bite. Oh, this is proper swimming towards me. Yeah, it's probably been an hour since, since the last bite. And uh, I was starting to wonder what was going on. I've played about with the depths on the adjustable and that hasn't, hasn't brought about anything. And um, yeah, the fixed one's literally just gone off. So yeah, I mean, I've seen one other person catch a carp so far. Um, so yeah, it's obviously by no means they're sort of throwing themselves up the bank, but yeah, nice to get another bite after a little break. Oh yeah, that'll do. Thank you very much. Lovely. So there he is. Sort of funny little pigeon chested one, this one. Yeah, probably about 11 pounds. Quite quirky uh, scaling pattern as well. Very unique. And uh, yeah, another victim to today's tactics. Yeah, really, really, really enjoying myself. Couldn't have thought of a better start to spring than a day like this. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed a new product in this video and it is the Explorer Rucksack Barrow Bag. A really, really versatile bit of kit. I think it's probably the most versatile sort of bag to keep all my kit in that I've ever used and, and I've ever seen sort of on the market. I'm not going to go into loads of detail why right now um, but if you want to find out more about this bag and why you can use it for short session fishing and long, long session fishing and use it in loads of different ways to suit exactly your style of fishing click the link in the description below okay so the light is fading pretty fast now i've probably got half an hour's worth of fishing left before i need to chuck the gear in the van and speed out of here before the gates lock me in uh, but I've had a really, really great session, done exactly what I needed to do, blew the cobwebs off and uh, yeah, got me out doing a bit of spring fishing. I was quite pleasantly surprised to have seen them all over the surface and to have been able to catch them on zigs as well. It's been great fun. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And if you have, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, click the button down below and of course, leave me a comment and let me know if you enjoyed it.